Hi, it's Elle, Dina and Kay and you are listening to Diana's, Diana's Death, Death Uncovered, Uncovered, a podcast that discusses the mysteries, the questions and the aftermath surrounding the horrific death of the lady that was loved by all. Diana, Diana Princess, Princess of Wales. Wales. Welcome back to Diana's Death Uncovered. If you're new, go back and listen to episodes 1 and 2 of the podcast. For those who have been following along, this is the third and final episode of the series, where we will take a look at the aftermath of what happened on the night Princess Diana died. Did the royal family have something to do with it? Keep listening to find out. In the crucial minutes following the crash, the only evidence we have of what happened are from eyewitnesses. The paparazzi following the Mercedes and the other cars entering the Pont de l'Alma tunnel. The car was dented into an unrecognisable piece of metal, like an abstract piece from an art exhibit. Photographers and other witnesses clambered out of their cars and rushed to the black Mercedes to see the damage. A witness claims that Diana had no visible injuries but was in shock. However, there were obviously some internal complications as she remained conscious but was crying in agony. Some photographers tried to help while others stopped to take photos. They were soon pushed aside by police who reportedly arrived at the scene at 12.30 a.m., 10 minutes after the crash. Firefighters arrived soon after. As she was pulled out of the debris by a firefighter, Diana spoke her last words. My God, what's happened? Let's not forget that there were other people in the car when this happened. Diana's boyfriend at the time, Dodi Fayed, and the intoxicated driver, Henry Paul, were pronounced dead at the scene. Dodi's bodyguard, Trevor Reese jones suffered terrible facial injuries, but was saved by an airbag the only airbag that worked. As soon as she was removed from the car, Diana's health worsened. She went into cardiac arrest at 1am. With the princess unconscious and unresponsive, medics feared that she would die at the scene. However, after some external cardiopulmonary resuscitation, her heart jolted back into action. There was still hope. The ambulance arrived and Diana left the scene at 1.41 a.m. She arrived at the P.T. Salpetria Hospital 25 minutes later. It was a whirlwind of beeping machines and worried doctors who attempted to save her life, but it was no use. Diana's facial injuries were too extensive, and at 4 a.m. on the 31st of August 1997, Diana, Princess of Wales, was announced dead. A uh, source from the Press Association is that Diana, Princess of Wales, has died. And as soon as there is any further news, we will bring it to you. As the news spread, people held their breaths in disbelief. A blanket of sorrow covered not only the United Kingdom, but the entire world. The people's princess was gone forever. It is now 24 years after the crash. Although the loss of our princess still remains with us, the world has certainly returned back to normal. However, there was something about the events of that night that didn't sit right with many people, and still don't to this day. As mentioned earlier, Diana left the tunnel at 1.41am, and she arrived at the Pitti Salpetria Hospital at 2.06am, 25 minutes later. Now, you would assume that she was taken to the closest hospital. However, this was not the case. The ambulance carrying Diana drove right past the Hotel du Hospital on the way to the Pitti Salpetria Hospital. Had she been taken to the nearest hospital, Diana may have lived. So, why wasn't this the case? Apparently, the Hotel du Hospital was not equipped with the correct medical equipment to treat the injured princess. But 
Was this really the reason? Or was it all a cover-up for a bigger problem we weren't meant to know about? Not only did Diana get divorced out of the royal family, her life as a royal was not all smooth sailing. She broke many royal protocols and made a lot of her own decisions. For example, sending her children to a normal school, making her own fashion choices such as wearing suits to formal events and experimenting with elaborate makeup, and speaking out about mental health. Now, these decisions may seem normal to you, but they disobeyed the strict set of rules that the British royal family must follow. So, although she was popular with the people, Diana did not have a good reputation within the royals. But would they have gone to the extremes of killing her? Well, there are still some other underlying issues that help investigate this theory. We all know that Prince Charles and Camilla Parker Bowles got together soon after Diana's death, but what many people don't know is that they couldn't get married if Diana was still alive. It was later revealed that Charles and Camilla were having an affair during Charles and Diana's marriage. Diana was aware of this, and it severely affected her mental health, as well as her relationship with Charles. As you can see, there are many motives that the royals had to be the possible cause of this alleged accident. Did they pressure the paramedics to be in on this setup? And was that the real reason why Princess Diana wasn't taken to the nearest hospital? That wraps up the final episode of this podcast. Hopefully, these episodes have given you a look into the death of Princess Diana. It is a shame that we will never find out whether the royals were involved with the crash. All the circulating rumours and conspiracies may never be answered. But as we have shown you through the series, the evidence is there. What do you think? Was it an accident? Or was it a calculated murder?